because I would not want to turn around and hit this road again in the Grand Highlander. But the smile on my face is genuine. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 24 Mazda CX-90 in S Premium Plus trim. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. The CX-90 is an all new model from Mazda that for now at least is sitting alongside the CX-9 as one of their two three row SUV offerings. Up front, we find that Kodo design grille with a black insert and chrome surround. Bookending that are these very compact projector LED headlights with LED turn signals. I can't say I like how small those housings are. On a bigger body SUV like this, I think they need to be more substantial. Beneath, we find functional vents to cool the front brakes and tires. This one's painted in the new Artisan Red Metallic. It's a deep wine hue that I like, but not as much as the Soul Crystal Red you can get on some other Mazda SUVs. This trim gets 20 inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped in Falcon all season tires, 275 section front and rear. There's a bit of chrome for the lower sills the upper window trim, the roof rails, and this inline six badge. Stepping back to look at the profile, it's an attractive silhouette. Cab rearward design sits nicely on those wheels. There's a humped rear end, much like the new BMW XM. And one thing you can't see from the profile view that you can only see looking at it like this is just how straight up and down these doors are. So slab sided. You've got a bit of flare happening at the wheel arches, but it looks too plain for me. At the back, we've got thin LED taillights and turn signals with a touch of chrome for the lower bumper and no exposed exhaust outlets. Once again, I like the side view, but the front and rear views are not evocative like other Mazda designs. What do you guys think? Is this better or worse looking than the Mazda CX-9? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this Range Topping Trim's premium white Napa leather interior with a black textured stripe down the seat centers, seat perforations, second row seat heating and ventilation. Here we've got captain's chairs so it can accommodate a total of six passengers but as standard, the CX-90 has a seventh seat. To get to the third row, pull on this tab, the seat angles and slides, giving you a nice wide access point to climb on back here. And I'm gonna go ahead and move over to behind this seat, which is matching the position of where that seat once was. Now behind it, it's six feet tall. I can not really get my foot all the way over. There we go. Knee room is just enough, headroom is also just enough. Hairs are just grazing against the roof with my head back on the headrest. That gets the thumbs up from me. Each third row passenger also has a USB-C port. You get cup holders and air vents down there. In the second row, looking at the doors, you got black leather right up top, sun shades, genuine wood and aluminum trim, textured fabric insert, leather with padding, hard plastics down low, good door storage, and a Bose 12 speaker sound system. This seat is once again matched up with that one. So when I climb inside behind my driving position, once again at six feet, I've got decent knee room, good sized map pocket, good foot pockets to slide my feet under. So thigh support is okay. And headroom is generous. Head easily clears the roof and I can recline the seat even further if needed. Thumbs up for me. In between myself and that passenger, we've got cup holders in this console, leather topped armrests, deep storage inside. Then there's a third zone of climate here with two USB-C ports plus a panoramic glass roof. Let's check out the front. Before we listen for the door closed noise, note how wide these doors open up. This is great for loading in things like car seats. Well, it's a pretty solid thud, but that sound with the handle is not so good. Smart keel entries for the front two doors. These front seats are also heated and ventilated like the second row with multi-way power adjustments and two position memory for the driver's seat. CX-90 for the floor mats. Here is your tailgate release button. Hold that momentarily. 
Behind the third row, we find 16 cubic feet of space underneath this floor. Under the second layer is a full-size spare tire. And you can't power fold down this third row. You gotta pull on these straps. That's gonna fold down the headrest and it's going to fold them flat. That's gonna give you access to 40 cubic feet of space. If you also fold down the second row, which once again, you can't do from back here, then you'll have access to 75 cubic feet of space. Also in the trunk, we find an AC and a DC outlet. The tailgate has a power close and lock button, plus hands-free functionality, AKA kick it. The front doors look similar to the back, but with more wood trim, we've got four one-touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. Stepping inside, Drivers find a heated leather wrap steering wheel. Feels great in the hands. We've got paddles on the back of the wheel, but they're pretty small and very plasticky. Digital gauge cluster is mildly reconfigurable. There is a head up display. Then we find a 12.3 inch infotainment system. Important to note, it is not a touchscreen unless you're using the wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto functionality. And when you're not using that, you've got a scroll wheel, which I don't actually mind because it's so intuitive. It's certainly less distracting than some touch screens with layers on layers of menus. There's also a physical volume knob and lots more of that beautiful wood trim replacing something like gloss black that's like the default for so many automakers. And it's just lazy. It smudges, it scratches, it looks cheap. This is better. Under here, we've got two cup holders. There's leather wrapping around your gear selector. You've got your dry mode selector here wireless charging pad, DC outlet, and then underneath the leather topped console, we find two USB-C ports and a shallow layer of storage. Visibility is not great. The second row headrests do block your one window that would avoid the blind spot of the C and D pillars. Thankfully, there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. This cabin is fantastic. I know it's the range topper, but for the price, $61,000 is tested, you're getting so many premium materials and everything fit and finish wise feels like a luxury car. All right, let's take the CX-90S Premium Plus for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. Okay. All right, Chimes, I get the picture. So loud and so persistent. I do like the animation on the TFT display when we fire the vehicle up though. Hello, miles per hour crew from the cabin camera angle and hello from the classic POV view. We, with our drive mode selector, are going to select the normal drive mode of the sport, normal, or off-road options. And then before I throw it in reverse, let me hit this button to show our front facing camera options we've got super wide and also super wide i guess this one is sort of the transparent view and then if we click over to the right we have some front tire shots then if we go in reverse that switches to the rear options including that transparent view or super wide or just regular let's do super wide and back things on up down into drive. I do like that the gear selector is set up such that park is off on its own little island to the left and then reverse neutral drive are in a line off to the right. So there's no confusion as to which gear you're in. Turning radius test. Oh my. That is a phenomenal turning radius. CX-90 pivots around like a CX-5. Jeez. Turn signal sound. It's a sharper knock than some other turn signal sounds I've heard recently. World famous horn test is up next. Ooh. Perky. It's a perky horn. Power trains in the CX-90. You've got two engines, three different output flavors. So the core motor is a new turbocharged inline six cylinder that in the non S variant makes 280 horsepower, but in this turbo S 
Leber makes 340 horsepower, or there's a plug-in hybrid variant that uses an inline four-cylinder. That makes 323 horsepower. So all of them making healthy output, all paired with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, and all sending power to an all-wheel drive system. And importantly, this is a rear-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive system. Mazda just injecting the fun to drive everywhere they can with this vehicle. I mean, what other mainstream automaker is coming out with a new turbocharged inline six-cylinder model in a vehicle like this? That's your evidence that Mazda cares about the driver. Furthermore, this inline six-cylinder is paired with a 48-volt mild hybrid system, so there's an efficiency play involved. You're running some of the accessory functions in the background, not requiring the engine to be on to do those things. The only trade-off with that system is that at like very low speeds, kind of creeping up to a stop or just getting away from a light, there's a strange transition between the hybrid system and the gas engine, the transmission kicking on and taking over. So it's it's a bit lurchy. Also, the brake pedal at low speeds is somewhat difficult to finesse, to just apply the perfect amount of pressure and come up to a stop. It's either a little too touchy or it's not really there and then you feel it. But at higher speeds, no issues at all with that sensitivity. Short of that little oddity with the mild hybrid system, the CX-90 is very amenable to ambling about town. The throttle response in normal is super progressive. The transmission, as soon as you're up to speed, is buttery in the transition between gears. The ride quality, after having just hopped out of the Toyota Grand Highlander, feels better. It's not quite as busy, it feels more composed on both smooth and uneven road surfaces. You do feel the bumps, but they're dampened sufficiently with these adaptive dampers on their way in through to your bottom. And the seats are comfortable, ergonomic, supportive. As the speeds pick up, cabin stays quiet and just really underlines Mazda's renewed focus on moving up scale with their vehicles. This more than any Mazda I've driven so far just delivers that impression of entry-level luxury. It's a very refined powertrain, very quiet ride. The wind noise is kept low. You can easily have a conversation with your fellow passengers without needing to raise your voice, even all the way into the third row. It's a great daily. Gotta see though if it's a good driver's three row as well. So let's move it to sport. And the gauges are gonna go red. It's going to downshift and we're gonna prod this powertrain. It's a good noise. I love a six cylinder. Excellent soundtrack, good momentum. It's not just that 340 horsepower, it's the 369 pound-feet of torque. that really gets the CX-90 up and moving. And letting off the throttle in sport, it doesn't quickly upshift. It'll hold that gear for a moment. So it's ready the moment you are to deliver more power. Though we're not on super twisty roads right now, I can already tell that the steering, while light, is direct and dialed. It's easy to place this SUV within the center of the lane and then negotiate a curve, telegraphing your arc perfectly. And just for fun, let's try out manual mode with the paddles on the steering wheel that are small but have decent travel 
and elicit pretty quick shifts. Down and up. Although, it does upshift for me. It doesn't let me go out to red line. Reminding me in the subtlest way that this is still a family through row and not a sports car. Which isn't going to stop me from flogging it to 60 like I would any sports car. So, let's do a bit of a brake boost here and let go. And there's 60 in 6.8 seconds, which is quick, but not as quick as independent tests have seen. They've seen 6.3 seconds to 60. Does it have the moves in the corners? That's the next question. Really like the brakes in motion here. Great response from those. Steering builds in resistance nicely through the corner. And the body stays composed. I mean, yes, it does pitch the nose a little bit under hard braking. And lean a bit in the corner. But not in any way that's unsettling. It's in a communicative way. Telling you, yeah, you're still driving a three-row SUV. It does have limitations. But their kinematic body control, aka breaking the inner wheel in the corner, keeps it very flat for this segment of car. In other words, it makes me want to do this again. It feels very light. It's controllable. It's enthusiastic. It's unusual for this class. This is where the CX-90 separates itself from its competitors. Because I would not want to turn around and hit this road again in the Grand Highlander. But the smile on my face <laughs> is genuine. Mazda knocked it out of the park with a driver's family three row. Which leads me to my miles per hour word of the day, which for this 24 Mazda CX-90 is vivacious, meaning lively and animated. When you actually prod this SUV, you're gonna find something that is more than willing to complement your driving enthusiasm with driving capability and this just energy and excitement as you're partaking. I love that, and it's just, as I've said a number of times now, it's unique, and I think that's what's most surprising and pleasing about this drive. Now, before we dive into pricing and competition, let's talk about top speed and fuel economy. The top speed for the CX-90 Turbo S is 130 miles per hour. The fuel economy for this vehicle is 23 MPG in the city, 28 on the highway, and 25 combined. The starting figure for the entry-level select trim with the lower output version of this motor is $41,000. If you want this output, the 340 horsepower, then you're looking at fifty-three dollars And this fully loaded Premium Plus trim is a hair, just a hair. Mine's just freshly trimmed. It's a hair under $62,000. Now let's dive into competitors, and I've already mentioned one option. It's the new Toyota Grand Highlander, and we'd be looking at the hybrid max version of that vehicle to compete with this powertrain. That one starts at $55,000. It makes 362 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.3 seconds, while getting fuel economy of 27 combined, and has the most cargo space in this class. Next up would be the Kia Telluride SX Prestige, that starts around $52,000. It makes 291 horsepower from its NA V6, gets to 60 in 6.9 seconds, has fuel economy of just 21 combined, but it does have the best towing capacity in this class at 5,500 pounds. Didn't mention the CX-90 tows 5,000 pounds. 
And last up would be the new Honda Pilot Elite trim that starts around $54,000. It makes the least power at 285 horsepower, gets to 60 in the slowest, seven seconds, and has fuel economy the worst at 20 combined. Before reaching my verdict, let me show you the adaptive cruise control with steering assist function, which stays perfectly in the center of the lane, even here on this curve. Not really intended to be hands-free, just showing how it works. And now, what I'm gonna say about these vehicles is that if you're not the kind of person who cares most about the driving dynamics of your family three-row SUV, then that new Toyota Grand Highlander is, is hard to dispute. It's got excellent passenger and cargo space, superb power, great fuel economy, and it's wrapped up in a handsome package. The Kia Telluride SX is the best looking of all of them on the exterior, but I think that its powertrain now is showing its age, and it's just not able to be competitive apart from that. The CX-90, where it really wins me over, is not only the power that it makes and the premium interior, which it does feel more posh, it feels more elevated over the other SUVs that I've mentioned, but it's how it drives, it's how it pulls you into the driving experience in the way that a, I'm gonna say it again, a, a sports car kinda does. This, in this segment, feels set apart. It feels special, it feels like a little wink a nod and a handshake to drivers who are kind of forced by life circumstances into shopping this segment. That's awesome. That's so, so cool. And that's why I'd probably choose the Mazda CX-90. Which would you guys choose? Would you go for the CX-90? Would you have the Kia Telluride SX? Would you have the Honda Pilot Elite? Or would you have the new Toyota Grand Highlander? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And once more into sports, I will see you again next time.